Hello, my name is Seamus Kelly. I'm a sociology student in Cork City in the south of Ireland. As part of our final year documentary thesis, I and two fellow students decided to conduct a major exploration of suburban subcultures. In particular, my focus is on the hip hop culture in Cork City. People might not immediately associate the picturesque south of Ireland with hip hop culture. However, you may be surprised to find that amongst the youth of suburbia and the inner city, it is thriving. Hip hop culture is often the subject of criticism. The language it uses is interpreted as misogynistic, while the self-aggrandizing nature of the lyrics seems to indicate the epidemic of materialism in today's culture. And yet, it can also be praised as an outlet for the frustrations of modern youth, a release valve for the young disenfranchised masses. Initially, I had set out to produce a broad study of the various facets of this culture. However, about two months into my initial research, I came across the work of one particular Cork-based artist whose music seemed hugely relevant to the goals of my thesis. Robert James Cashman, or Grandmaster Cash as he calls himself, is well known in the Irish hip-hop scene for his explicit lyrical content, his flamboyant clothing, and his unrelenting quest for fame. His first EP, Steamin' and Dreamin', was released to decidedly mixed reviews from the Irish hip-hop community. Some loved him, most hated him. I contacted Grandmaster Cash via his MySpace page, and he agreed to meet me for a personal tete-a-tete. -tete. As Cash outlined his contentious views on life, he seemed to personify so many of the divisive issues surrounding hip-hop. I quickly realised that this individual could well become the sole subject of our documentary. I proposed this to Cash, and he immediately agreed. Indeed, he seemed surprisingly eager to have a chance to espouse his views on camera. Upon reviewing the footage, it was apparent that I had something far above and beyond what I had initially set out to achieve. When we presented the documentary in college, the reaction would have made Grandmaster Cash proud. Of the five lecturers who marked the project, three gave us firsts, one failed us on the spot, and one simply walked out of the presentation. So shocked was he by what he called the deeply offensive nature of the material. Soon afterwards, I began posting scenes from the film on the internet and was truly amazed by the reaction they received. Not only were people linking to it on Bebo and Facebook, but it was being heavily debated on respected academic websites and journals. Indeed, as time passed, the hype surrounding the project seemed to gather a momentum all of its own. What you are about to see is the documentary that has divided the Irish academic and musical communities. Indeed, so controversial is some of the material that the students who made the film with me have asked to remain off camera and anonymous. Is this man a genius? A fearless commentator on society's ills? Or is he a delusional, foul-mouthed miscreant who actually personifies these problems? I'll leave it up to you to decide. So I present to you this portrait of an uncompromising artist struggling to be heard. Grandmaster Cash, back again. Bigging up the fucking Roco Pro. 2099. Just give me a fucking B. Come on! When the beat comes in and I'm feeling me flow I'm in the rooms fucking brimming with fiends and bios I be ready to explode and you know that the show will have loads of class Cause I be getting in your face like I get in your mam's ass With no effort at all, she be swallowing my shaft right down to the buzz And she asked me to go down but I don't do that I might as well be licking an inside out cat So I take up my sauce and throw my foot up a key And my toes have disappeared in one, two, three Now she's screaming from my man jam Cause she knows that I can satisfy the it is like nobody else can But when I chuck my muck, that's all she'll get I don't care if she's wet Cause I got what I wanted to get And that's empty balls And tomorrow, when I don't call You'll find her crying on the stairs With the sound of me coming still ringing in her ears Cause even though she's doable and screwable And her fanny lips are chewable She doesn't have no class at all And I don't want her ass at all To be honest, it's barely passable now with the help of Carol Love, R.I.P. I'm about to get classical. 
Because we go mad for Grandmaster Cash As I be flicking all sorts of things up the gash They just can't get enough for Grandmaster Cash In the place by 29 Give me some guitar Riff it up on the motherfucking guitar A little more guitar 29.9 Cause we all be going mad for Grandmaster Cash Cause I be flicking all sorts of things off the gash They just can't get enough for Grandmaster Cash Cause I'm a pure fucking ride by Seriously, fucking anybody will be mad to fucking miss out on a cunt like me, right? I'm your fucking decent. 2099, Roco Crow, Grandmaster Cash, I'm fucking old. What kind of music are you into yourselves? Uh, I eat metal and stuff, really. Kind of like that trash. Uh. Rock and roll. Yeah. It looks afraid and stuff with Peter people like that. Where are you guys from? France. Yeah, France. What kind of music would you do you listen to? Uh, in Cork, uh, rock. Probably a bit more of hip-hop, R&B or something, I suppose. Oh yeah, yeah, I listen to like dance music. Old rap, like hip-hop, and it's a lot of classical. Irish folk music, anything like that. Or country and western, I don't. I don't really have a specific type of music that I like, really. Of everything. Yeah, actually, it, there's quite a, a lot of metal bands around. Yeah. 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 Well, what I do really is I put transistor behind my back. I leave the music play. I never stand with a mic. You know, and uh, the mock guitar, you know. Yeah. And I leave the transistor play away. It's music, whatever music I like. Are you aware of, of a park hip hop scene or do you think no. there's one? No. Hip hop? No. Not a lot. Don't like that a lot, no. 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 It's just not good. Uh, I wouldn't have a clue. Right. I started imitating this singer on the CD, you see? Playing with this rock guitar. Yeah. Just make a humour, make people laugh, you know? Yeah. Have you ever heard of a, of a cork face artist called uh, Grandmaster Cash? I haven't, sorry. I don't know much about him, but I, I heard of it. No, I haven't. No, I don't know. Can we say I have heard of him? So <laughs> that helps. <probably. laughs> Robert James Cashman was born in Rogerstown, Cork, on January fourth, nineteen eighty-four, to parents Robert and Gloria Cashman. From an early age, Robert Jr. showed a keen interest in music and an obvious creative flair. From age five, he attended a private boarding school in Glanmire, Cork. A keen sports player, he is fondly remembered by his teachers as being a nice, good-natured and well-mannered young man. In 1996, Robert began his secondary school education in Presentation Brothers College, Cork, and it was here that he first developed his love of rap and hip-hop. Indeed, Robert found himself so enthralled with this music that he played less and less sports, eventually quitting the school teams. However, he excelled in the debating club, and it was through this that Robert found his hunger for the spotlight. He captained the team until his expulsion in 2001, having sold the PE teacher's shoes to another student. Robert went on to complete his Leaving Certificate courses in Bruce College, Cork. In 2002, he attended an alarm fitting course and got a job in a local security company. He soon quit the job, however, to pursue his dreams of becoming a world-famous rapper. How did you see that tail, boy? The fucking ball just flew straight into the wind there. When I first met Cash in 2009, he had just released his first EP, Steamin' and Dreamin', and was struggling hard to promote it. I found myself wanting to understand the man's motivation, why he chooses such a controversial means of expressing himself, and what fuels his creative fire. I got into hip-hop there because uh, there was... Do you know, when I was growing up, there was loads of uh, fellas in my school you now and fellas that I used to hang around with on the streets. They used to uh, listen to hip-hop there. Yeah. So then I went away and uh, I had to listen to it myself. And uh, I think the first one now uh, I listened to was N.W.A. 
And uh, so I kind of got into it because, do you know, the way they had kind of a tough life now, and, uh, you know, growing up on the streets, kind of guns going off, and that's kind of the same way as I grew up, you know? Because, like, Rochestown now, you'll be hearing guns go off every fucking two seconds, right? Serious. You don't, like, you go down to the shop there, you don't know if you're going to get shot or fucking raped or fucking... Or what, like, you know? Mental. So, back to your school days. Um, you were clearly influenced by American rappers. Uh, as a Cork rapper, what's your message for the youth of Cork? Follow your dreams and just get out there and do what you want. Just be true to yourself. There's no point in telling lies to yourself because you're only going to get found out. By yourself? Yeah. Okay, in a broader sense, your own personal philosophy. What's the one sentence that sums up Grandmaster Cash? Only God can judge me. That's what he says. Because there'll be a lot of fiends there saying like, oh, look at the stadia and look at your big mad egg head, like things like that, you know? And, you know, just kind of having a go at you because you're trying to make something of yourself. You know, trying to get off the streets, trying to make a bit of money, trying to get your words out there. So the underlying meaning is only God can judge you. Can you judge anyone? The fellas that be judging me. Yeah, can you judge them? Yeah, because in the Bible it says like, do, do unto others what they did to you. If they judge me, I'll, I'll judge them. Like, do you know? Two okay. can play, two can play at that game. Like, it takes two to tango, fight fire with fire. So if someone were to assault you, if someone were to hop you on the street, your natural response? Bear them. Bear them. Pick up a rock and bear it off the forehead. I think that comes through in the music. Would you ever get hassled over your lyrics? Sometimes there. Me man doesn't leak them. In the old path of 2096, I was approached by some naughty science mm -hmm. pricks. They offered me a fortune to help him out with some shit. And go on a journey in search of the clit So they gave me a pill that made me go all small Smaller than the size of a mouse's balls And they put me inside a tiny rocket ship And fired me into some Bjorn's fanny lips Grandmaster Grandmaster So Jean To find the clit Why the fuck Did I agree to help scientists Cash's interpretation of Cork's city and suburbs fascinated me. Was this really the violent, dangerous place he made it out to be? And was hip-hop somehow responsible for perpetuating this image? My fellow students and I took to the streets of the People's Republic to seek out individuals who could help answer these questions. Our first stop was the Rave Cave clothing shop in the famous English market on Grand Parade. There we spoke to the owner, Paul Mulvaney. I've been here now about 25 years, so I've seen it all, the punk scene, skateboard scene, and there was the dance scene, which was before the, punk, before the um, skateboard scene, and it would have big influence on the clothes that I sell. So at the moment, I've been selling a lot of hip-hop clothes over the, over the last couple of years. But I've noticed now a lot of the foreign nationals, the Polish people and the Nigerian guys, were buying a lot of stuff off me, but a lot of them have gone now with the recession, but there's still quite a few around. Cork hip hop scene. Um, I don't know. I saw Charlie Spoon, DJ Spoons, playing in, in, in sorry in uh, the Balkan one time, and uh, he was good. He was entertaining. But uh, for a fellow from Mallow, he doesn't sound like he's from Mallow. You know, he sounds like he's from Long Beach, Compton, or something like that. But uh, I mean, hip hop can come from anywhere. And in terms of the, the the rapping end of hip hop, I've heard some great stuff from the young lads in Cork, and it's Cork. You know, it's not it's not from anywhere else. It's Okay, the beats might be, but the the what they're saying and how they say it comes from Cork. That's the way it should be. Yeah. I was walking on the streets after a pub or after a club one night, and some guy called the Bukel Dawn started following us. And I was saying, "Come on, let's get out of here!" But uh, he's just nori rapping at us, like basically, and his friend following us around with a cup. A lot of people seem to take offence to the, the nature of the music in terms of its how it's uh, can be very misogynistic at times, you know. People have suggested that 
your lyrics are misogynistic. I know you've got a lot of stick from feminist groups over the content of your rap. What you say, misog misogynistic? Like milk, misogynized. Do you milk. mean that the, the, the violence and the sexism and exactly, all that yeah. in the lyrics and that? Yeah. No, that's, I'd say that's a load of crap. I mean, if you go back to the mods and the rockers, they were saying it about that. They were saying it about the sex pistols and punk music. You have the reggae music, which seems to portray peace and love. And that comes from Jamaica, probably the most violent country in the world. I'd say Kingston, Jamaica is practically a no-go area. So you can't really say anything about any type of music. People are nice, people are good and bad. And I don't think the music has any... I certainly never stopped any of my children um, listening to any lyrics. I have a young son who grew up listening to all the music that I have at home, uh, many of which contain multiple four-letter words and all the rest of it, and I've never heard him utter one of them out of context. You know, what's, what's the big deal? You know, like, uh, the way that Freak FM in Cork voluntarily had a kind of a nine o'clock uh, limit on music with bad language in it, and generally that's what that was stuck to, and that's fine. You know, if there's, I'd say even an odd bit of bad language here and there wouldn't, wouldn't mean the end of the world. I mean, you look at um, the likes of Jerry Ryan uses a lot of bad language, and increasingly DJs do on the radio. And I think, thank, thank fuck, like it's it, people are relaxing a little bit, you know. As, as uh, you know, there's a lot worse things going on in the world than than a few bad words, like. Um, have you ever heard of the the, the subject of our documentary? Is um, this guy called Grandmaster Cash? No, uh, no. <laughs> He's right over here. <laughs> Starting. Uh, inspiration, Shakespeare. Your man Seamus Meany, he fell out there, he won a, a prize in some competition. Yeah, or yeah, that's Seamus Heaney. Yeah. He, uh, do you know what? They, like, they're all long dead now. Most of the time, my inspiration comes from uh, brain pictures. Do you know what? They're when you, uh, when you go to sleep, even though your eyes are closed. You can still see things, but they're like inside your head. Do you know? They're not outside. They are brain pictures, like. Uh, do you know? Things now, like uh, they be pure word. There are some things, like you know, you can't get inspiration from. Do you know? And uh, you know, I'm not going to write a, a rap song now about. Do you know? A giraffe stealing a sandwich. Grandmaster in the future. That was from brain pictures. Close your eyes. As we travel into the future, to a place full of robots. In the future there'll be no peeps on the streets, just a load of robots making loads of bleeps. Running around with their shiny metal asses, too busy to be battled with races or classes. Grandmaster will be there all up in their face, trying to build a new human race. I don't really care about suckers or switches, all I wanna do is fuck robot bitches and get them up the pole with me human seeds, or they can squirt out babies like a factory. So I paint myself up all silver and shit, so that I'll fade in and get a robot bitch. In the future, it probably won't suit ya. Fucking sexy robots, as long as I am on top. With a magnet in my cash, I can't resist this shit. And you don't need a kind of one, you fuck a robot slip. Soon enough, one comes my way with the look in her eyes that says she wants to get laid. So I go to a hotel and book into a room and take her upstairs to invent a metal room. Lay her down in the bed and start poking her way. Trying to avoid a robot lady spray. She's moaning and groaning and she quivers and twitches. The best thing about fucking robot bitches. They always start beeping like a mate and call when they back a shit up on Grandmaster's bars. Fucking robots in the future, buddy. Yes. In the future, it probably won't suit ya. Fucking sexy robots, as long as I am on top. Doing her from behind like a robot mongrel, cause if she went on top, she snapped my dick like a pencil. Slapping her ass like a jockey on a horse. She's climaxing while she screams herself hoarse, and while I buzz my nut, I grab a robot feet. My job is over, download complete Grandmaster Cash, a young man in his prime Fucking robot bitch just hopped in that night Future doesn't look too bad, mate Serious, robot bills are mad for the cock Same as normal bills, really, I suppose
esqueça. You've taken a bit of stick from the Irish hip hop press. Um, if you permit me, I'll read you some reviews and get your, your opinions on them. Yeah, uh, thanks so well. Aaron described your EP Steamin' and Dreamin' as unimaginative, boorish rubbish. The only redeeming feature of which is that it's very short. It is short, like. How is that, how is that a bad thing? Do you know what I mean? It's a fucking EP. They're meant to be short. They're not meant to be. Like, if I wanted to do a fucking long York, I would have done a fucking album. Well, on to the next, the, the next publication, um, Irish hip-hop magazine, Tunes. Described your, your single Grandmaster in the future with a very short review. It just says, odious. Hateful, causing disgust, are offensive. Some some people will probably find it offensive, yeah, but like, do you know? Fuck them if they do. On to the next, the next review. I mean, um, renowned hip hop journal Hop Press. The excerpt just says, "Fuck Grandmaster Cash." I've heard more melody from a dying pigeon. This man is single-handedly destroying Irish music. What do you have to say to that? I say fucking fuck hot press, right? What the fuck do they think they are? Fucking anyone can say them things, like, do you know? Obviously the fiend doesn't, fucking what do they know about hip hop, like? Fucking nothing. They don't know nothing about rapping. They don't fucking know nothing about it. They only know us about, do you know what they know us about now? Then all's about fucking nothing. One of Cash's first ever live gigs was in Sober Lane on Sullivan's Quay. My fellow students and I set up an interview with owner Ernest Cantillon, and we began by asking how the gig had come about. Yeah, um, he sent what I think what I thought was his agent in to talk to me. Um, but looking back afterwards, it was probably something that possibly a friend or probably somebody he had paid um, to pretend to be an agent of his. Obviously, I thought it was going to be something special. It's, I was kind of thinking to myself, this thing's going to be thrown on YouTube. People are going to be talking about the bar. Yeah, yeah, it was quite, it was fairly hectic. No matter when you have someone of that caliber playing inside the place, like people are going to go and see it. I would say there's probably five or six people here, maybe, to see it. There was queues going down from Sober Lane, way down past Fass, up by uh, you know the Beamish Brewery. I would say, without a doubt, it was probably the longest show that I ever played. Halfway through the first, use the word song loosely, um, things deteriorated and people started to leave. Then as well as that, I had to, you know, kind of freestyle on stage as well and kind of something no like, you know, I'm Grandmaster Cash and I'm here to stay and if you don't like it, then you're gay. And I would say by the end of the second song, it was pretty much just us. Making stuff up off the top of my head and if you don't like it, Okay, yeah. On the same night, you uh, you got in local court musician Pat Fitz to uh, recoup some of the some of the crowd. That was ridiculous. I came in, see what the crack was. You know, all this big hype about this this big rapper. He is. He's how how did he get the gig? What was Ernest thinking? I mean, Ernest is normally on the ball. Like Ernest was definitely on the ball when he set up that gig. And uh, this fuck comes in like here we are proper musicians, oh, it's our living, do you know? And then this schmuck. It's a short thing, like. A moron, like. I could go out to mass and the people turn up to see me. And he's, 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 he's fucking floating in on his shit, like. Pat Fitz, obviously, is a, he's aware of your work. Oh, he's a fan, yeah, he loves it. Uh, he was actually, I was only on to him there the other day. Basically, he was just saying that he's seen the video for Grandmaster in the Future and that it was without a doubt his favourite video of all time. I saw one, what is it, in the future, fucking... He wanted so much to be in the video. Sexy fucking robots, I mean... Do you know, when he wasn't, he just got, I'd say, he just got fairly upset, like, do you know. He's taking advantage of, of publicans, like, I mean, Ernest lost a lot of money that night, like. Obviously lost quite a lot of money on the night. He made a shitload of money for the fame. Still got the man in contact with me, or his agent in contact with me, 
um, looking for his cut of the door money, um, which of course there was none. Like I said, if you make a load of money now, like, just throw the agent the couple of honey, like, and, you know. And who is your agent? Me, like. And it was only when we talked about it afterwards. I assumed he had heard of Grandmaster Cash and he had assumed that I had. And we were naive, we didn't want to be seen as uh, out of touch, so none of us actually said, have you heard of this guy? We all pretended that we have because we believed his hype. Um, Pat still laughs about it. Basically, my walk as an agent has nothing to do with my walk as a rapper. I kind of puts on a different voice when I does the agent thing. Hi, this is the agent of Grandmaster Cash, and I was just wondering if you'd like him to play a gig. To speak to Grandmaster Cash about it, he uh, he says that the gig was a huge success. Yeah, even that itself was a difficult thing because he, he talks about himself in the third person. Grandmaster Cash now talks about himself in the third person. There's just no link between what actually happened and what this man thinks happened, um, which is unfortunate. It's sad, it's sad really, because he's out of touch. Um, my agent has a different bank account to me and everything like it. On, on, on even about a week or two after, the only thing that kind of kept my hopes afloat was that I assumed it was some kind of hidden camera show. Pretty much my agent, it's me, but it's like a different person. And then I kind of quickly realised that the joke was on me and I was just sickening. You're probably not going to like this, but um, Grandmaster Cash has said on this same documentary this. I made Pat Fitz what he is today. How would you feel about that? Are you joking? And he totally admit that to you as well, like. Do, do you actually believe that? I catapulted him into the hemisphere. He believes this. He seems to believe it. Who the fuck is this guy, like? Who who does he fucking think he is, like? Is he? Does he, is it a case where he's just putting on an actor? Is he just fucking this person all the time, like? Do you know, he'd always be saying to me things, no, like, thanks, Grandmaster Cash. He's a fucking plunk, Jesus. I'm around 10 years. Because he's only new to this, like. Does he not know who I am? I was on your star. I fucking made him. He should be fucking supporting me. Fuck. Fuck this, I'm on here. You asked to help the small man out, you know? In Cork Hip Hop, there seems to be a, a rivalry between Carrigaline and Rochester. What's the, the root of this? I mean, what are the differences and indeed similarities? Well, we get it straight now. There's no similarities between Rochester and Carrigaline. Fucking different breed. Carrigaline are all fucking Muppets, right? The Rocker crew were fucking decent. We're the hardcore. It's like fucking NWA is what we are. And us fucking dopes. Hanson. Do you know what? It's kind of like uh, the kind of rivalries now between kind of east side and west side in LA, do you know? Like the rivalries between uh, Biggie you know, and Tupac, do you know? It's the same kind of thing because both, both places are rough enough spots, like, do you know, and it's tough growing up. But, like, do you know, we're not only a crew, we're a gang. And, uh, do you know? There would be a fair bit of violence now, I read every so often, like, you know, gang violence and all things like that. But, uh, I actually... Just between you and me, there, is, uh, one time, we were down and we were, uh, fighting a lot of things from Carrigaline, you know? And, uh, the lawmen were called, you know? And fucking, I said, I dive onto the lawman, so I fucking, I kill them, I fucking kill the lawman, mate. Serious. Just make sure now this is done. Go on camera. Um. Well, I, I didn't, I didn't kill him. Like, I, I mean, he didn't die, but he, you know, I, uh, I broke his leg anyway. Like, you know, and he was in bits after it, mate. Well, like, you know, his leg no wasn't broken. Like, you know, he could walk away from it. But uh, uh, it was a fairly bad bruising, like, do you know? And, uh, yeah, because I hoofed him, and uh, oh, he was in bits after it, by, do you know? But that's what I'm saying, like, do you know? He did never fuck with, uh, with the Rocco crew again then after that, do you know? But, you know, does the fella know he's, like, I kind of run the party, the crew up in Rochester, and the fellow who's kind of, 
my opposite down in Catagline. He, uh, Dr. Feekenstein is his name. Like Maca and DC, they moved away, they just couldn't stay Couldn't hack the violence from day to day Bait and fiends, fucking heads off walls Getting the ladies to suck on my walls Driving around with the midnight crew And having desert parties till the law get called and Laying down beats, that's not a crime And if it was, they do the fucking time This is the life in Carrigaline When you're F-E-E-K by Einstein Than a pair of old saggy tits. The grandmaster cash is a fucking dope who looks like an old fiend's dangly bit. But the viewers all want me, what can I say? They want my knob and I don't have to pay. There's a pull beneath them when they see this face and they ride their fathers just to get a taste. People say I'm crazy, I don't think I'm shady. Lazy maybe, but it's all a little hazy. From the hash that I've been smoking, washed down with the pints of gin. But if you like my rhymes and you're looking fine, you better make an appointment with the doctor of sin. That's my motherfucking name, bitch. Name, bitch, name, bitch. Watch out, it's alive, it's alive. It's fucking raining again, boy. It's a bit of fucking doors, boy. I forgot my umbrella, and I. What the fuck is all that about, boy? Grandmaster Cash, you're a fucking knob in, boy. Your face looks like a sideways gant. Rocco Crew, lick me balls. Carrigaline, fucking decent, boy. Dr. Feekenstein, that's me name. Don't wear those. Cause if you do, I'll fucking beat you. Carrigaline is fucking decent. It is Fiend Carrigaline Alive is fucking decent It is Fiend Dr. Fiekenstein, it seemed, was Cash's mortal enemy. With Cash representing Rotestown and Fiekenstein Carrigaline, they truly hated each other. I got in contact with Fiekenstein, but he flatly refused to participate in the documentary. He wanted nothing to do with Grandmaster Cash. Not a fucking grain of talent in him. But like, do you know, he didn't know, for some fucking dopey reason, like, do you know, people kind of prefer, uh, some people prefer Carrigaline. Probably people from Carrigaline. I has a gig coming up. Inside in the Crow Skeen, down there on uh, Douglas Street, you know. And what the fucking dope did, he went away and he fucking organised the gig, right? Down there. On the fucking night after my gig. Do you know? And the only reason I'm not doing it in fucking, like, in the pint now. Or fucking somewhere bigger. Like fucking space. Is because, because I wanted to do it in cock. Nobody wants to go out to fucking gigs. Two nights in a fucking row, like. Do you know? No one's going to fucking... We're in the middle of a fucking reception, like. Tickets for Cash's gig were available at Plugged Records on Washington Street, where he often went to buy CDs and promote his own material. We set up an interview with Albert Toomey from Plugged to find out how the tickets were selling. 
Yeah, they're not going very well. Um, I'm not quite sure if they're pushing it well enough, but he seems to have a bit of a bad reputation. Um, I don't know, he's quite intimidating, comes into the shop, he's, he's got a big attitude. I don't know if it's going to do well, it doesn't look like it's going to do well at all. Have there ever been altercations in the shop as you had to be thrown out? No, but some of the customers don't, don't like the look of him and people have left the shop. He's, as I say, he's quite intimidating, he's, he's loud, he's got, he comes in with his headphones and you can like, hear him over the music in the shop. And Yeah, he, he doesn't really say too much to be honest, but I think, I think again he's got a bad reputation and yeah. that might be affecting the, the sales of tickets and stuff. Have you heard, have you heard any of his music yourself? Um, uh, aside from over the headphones. Yeah, I've 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 heard some some tunes. It's not really my my thing. I'm more into uh, rock, rock and roll myself. But yeah, I, I don't know how the the rap scene in Cork is doing in general. But uh, this guy seems to be bombing anyway. So, right. fairness, I don't really give a shit. Having met so many people directly involved in the Cork music scene, I decided to seek out a more detached opinion. We went to the offices of Senator Dan Boyle, chairperson of the Irish Green Party. Well, I was young once myself for a start, uh, but uh, I, I also was uh, involved in, in youth work myself for quite a long time uh, before fully getting involved in politics. There does seem to be a bit more of a, a, a youth culture, especially in terms of music and arts and performance and stuff like that, that uh, is, is up a notch, I think, certainly in terms of its, uh, the level of it and the amount of it than, than would have been uh, around when I was at that age in particular. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if it's changed that much. I mean, I, I can remember the Sex Pistols album uh, and the track Bodies, yeah, which was just, uh, which strangely enough was an anti-abortion song, but it, it, it was uh, it, it was full of F words. And uh, I think one particular verse was uh, every second word was F, F this and F that. I think. Um, the, the whole point of a youth culture uh, is to to shock and get a reaction in any case. Uh, but you know, there's nothing new in the world about you know, an older generation or an establishment kind of saying that this far and no further and, and kind of trying to stymie people's creativity. But that said, you know, sometimes people do go beyond the beyonds and th there has to be a debate about what's acceptable and what isn't. Grandmaster Cash Vise, representing the Roker crew, 29 I was out in the club on a Friday night. I saw this pure, she was pure fucking tight. I gas straight up and said to buy her a drink. She looked at me funny like a oh, shit don't stink. So I went to the bar and I got a double jack. I could feel her fucking eyes born and holds me back. When she didn't know me name, she treated me like trash. But now she's all wet for Grandmaster Cash. But the bitch be pure steaming. Wide awake dreaming. She thinks she be getting any of me steaming. Pure's be wide, you only get one chance to have Grandmaster Cash get freaky. In your pants. She comes so the title, Bitch Be Pure Steaming. For those who don't know, can you explain what steaming means? Steaming, uh, when someone's steaming now, they be pure locked, scuttled, going mad, no one mental, so uh, finagled, um, fucking. That kind of flip schneebel. You only get one chance to have Grandmaster Kashka freak in your pants. It's a bit juvenile. It's it's uh, it's someone who's probably exaggerating his prowess uh, probably a hundred times, uh, and it's probably no different from a lot of young men that way. It's in line with a lot of hip hop internationally, I guess. Uh, it, it's that kind of genre. Um, it wouldn't be my cup of tea. I'd be interested to see how young people actually react to it. If you take out the profanity and all the rest, it probably is a fair approximation of uh, yeah, how, how young people see themselves and uh, how they socialise and how they interact with each other. Yeah. That that doesn't shock me. Yeah. No, I probably won't be going to one of the gigs. But, uh. <laughs> <laughs> At this stage, I felt that the interviews were going well. And yet, I wanted to get more of a feel for Cork itself and what it means to Grandmaster Cash. So when he offered to give me a quick tour of his favourite spots in the city, I jumped at the chance. So uh, this is one of my favourite places in Cork. It's the docks, you know, and it's kind of, if you think about it, it's kind of like the heart of, uh, of Cork. But originally, the docks were actually, they were built by a fucking seal over there. But they weren't built by a seal, I just seen a seal there. Uh. So uh, the docks, were built in like 1842. Fucking lot of pigeons. Uh, 
they were built by Vikings. They built the docks just so they'd have someone to park their boats. And uh, basically they called it the docks because uh, the Vikings, they come from Switzerland. And uh, docks is actually, uh, it's Switzerlandish for uh, ducks. So when the Vikings came over, they seen a load of ducks and they said, oh look, docks. And so it became known as the docks. So then kind of business, it, you know, people came, they got jobs, parking, Viking boats, no, and things like that. And then there was kind of sandwich bars so that the people walking here could go away and get a mangle for themselves. And uh, then they kind of set up uh, like smoothie bars, no, and things like that. Do you know, and then that kind of spread out because people who walked in smoothie bars kind of needed newspapers so there was a newspaper place set up next to that and then people who walked in newspapers they had to get up early in the morning so they need like a cup of coffee so a coffee shop opened and people who needed coffee then needed milk so a milk shop opened you know and it kind of it just kept growing and all because of the vikings like cock wouldn't be here no if it wasn't for the vikings you know so like you know people say oh they're kind of like dangerous fellas you know but you know, they were actually nice enough people because if you think about it, I'd have known where to live, you know, if it wasn't for them. In the past, you've done some pretty innovative things as regards self-promotion. Can you tell us about any of those? Uh, yeah, like, you know, um, things now, like, you know, me film tonight, York. I always be interested in movies now, that kind of thing, you know. And uh, I decided, like, the best way to get into movies was to go away and kind of... Uh, review movies myself it's called pop fiction the start of the movie is after the end of the movie that would be like in the fast and the furious at the start the show as vin diesel getting away from the fiend if you know it's the end of the movie then why the fuck do you want to watch the whole movie unless there's a shitload of riding in it and believe me this movie pop fiction there's not very much riding in it. And the bit of riding that's in it, that's not the kind of riding we likes. There's loads of different characters. One of them is played by John McLean. And basically his story is that he forgets what time it is because his watch is after going missing. And then we find out that all the time it was up Christopher Walken's hope. I heard as well you did some um, some children's audiobooks. I did, yeah. Uh, one of them there was The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham. The mole had been walking very hard all the morning, spring cleaning his little home. It was small wonder then that he suddenly flung down his brush on the floor and said, butter and oh blah, and also hang spring cleaning. So he scraped and scratched and scrabbled and screwed walking busily with his little paws. For some reason that didn't do too well now. Uh, I think it only sold about three copies. I, do you know, I think it's just because it's a shit book, like. So it's called Shandon Tower. And uh, it's basically, well, do you know, it's linked to the docks, kind of. Do you know, when, uh, when the fucking Viking fiend, uh, the kind of boss of the Vikings, do you know, he needed somewhere to live. So I said best place would probably be up on top of a hill where there's a fucking we build a tower so I can see me fucking boats. Do you know, he was a bit of a ball bag, like, and fucking one day there, there was uh, just this normal kind of cock fiend, do you know. He said, fuck this for the game of tiddlywinks, like, he went up but the door was locked, you know, and they're pure big doors, like, you couldn't fucking hoof them in now and then. So he was dating that climbing door, the fella. So he climbed up and see the top window there. He fucking climbed in the top window and fucking uh, bit the shit out of the thing, like rammed the pineapple up his hope and that kind of thing, you know, fucking really fuck with him. So the Viking goes, fucking hell, boy. I'm flat, like I'm in bits, you know. So he says, fucking better fuck off back to Switzerland. The fucking cock fiend was a pure brain box. And he said, I'm not letting these fucking humps get away now from me at all. He fucking, he tobogganed down the hill and got down to the docks way before the fiends and fucking bonked all their boats so they couldn't go fucking nowhere, you know? So the Viking fiends ran away, they fucked off down to Kerry and uh, 
they fucking built in, you know, the giant's causeway, and they fucking walked over then, they kind of just walked over uh, the sea to uh, fucking Wales or England or something. Cash's bizarre history of Cork was confusing. At first I had thought that he was joking, trying to get a rise out of me, but his increasingly quiet, reverential tone was leading me to believe he was in fact deadly serious. Do you know, that's basically how uh, the King of Cork came to be. The place I grew up and the place I live, as, as you know, is uh, Cork. Basically, the people there, they're the best people you're ever going to meet. Like, I kind of said I'd write them a song to give them something back for all they gave me, you know, just the support and the welcome. It's, it's called the People of Cork and uh, it goes out to all the people of Cork. One, two, one, two, three, four. I live in Cock City, it's such a lovely place The people all know me by name and by face They're decent and lovely, they're always so good they have a city and also some woods They see me doing rap shows, they like what I do And then when I go into town to buy shoes Last stop on Cash's tour of Cork was one of Ireland's most famous tourist attractions. This is Blarney Castle and this is, uh, do you know what you were saying about the King of Cork? But yeah, so he came out here and he was living out here with his Queen, you know, some girl from Mayfield. He was going out with all for ages, you know, they were married now and that kind of thing. But uh, the King of Cork, he was pure kind of a, a freaky fiend, you know. Bandage, you no, know, and that kind of stuff. The Queen, she was a pure chatterbox, you know. Fucking couldn't shut her up, you no. Know? And she used to go around telling everyone that he was a pure freaky fiend. What happened anyway, he found out, you know, I came back to him. He got the mads in, like, you know, he completely fucking flipped out, last at you went. And he fucking picked up his favourite rock and fucking hoofed it off her forehead. And she fucking, all her brains went all over the rock. And, you know, I killed her, like, killed her stone dead. <laughs> stone dead, you know. Then he fucking, he said, I'll uh, put the rock up on top of the castle so that nobody fucks with me anymore, you know. And because it had your own brains all over it, you know, it kind of had her magic powers uh, talking really good. Do you know that if you if you kiss the stone, that you get those powers. Loads of fatties from America be coming over. They want uh, the gift of the gob, you know. So fucking that's why you brought out here. Uh, Wanting to tell you about the fucking story, do you know. But also because I've been feeling a little dry, do you know. I haven't written any new fucking things in about a week. So I'm gonna fucking bowl on up there now and fucking, do you know, kiss the stone, see what happens. So uh, do you want to come up? Sure. Bring me up, yeah. Yes, and hold by. Are you sure, yeah? Once again, I was astonished by Cash's version of local history and the sincerity and conviction with which he told it. I found myself wondering how he had come by this clearly fraudulent information. But as he kissed the Blarney Stone, I was suddenly reminded of our preliminary research and something in Cash's past that had, until now, seemed irrelevant. I decided that the next time we met, I would confront him about his sources. Come here, Cash. Um, who told you all that stuff about Cork? Where did you get that history from? Well, like, that's, you know, it's different now from history books, but that's what actually happened, like, you know, because the boys uh, in school, they told me the kind of real story, you know, that the history teacher was afraid to tell me. Well, yeah, but I mean, like, even even factually, it, it, no, nothing nothing you've said agrees with, with the standard accepted history. Yeah, but you see, the standard accepted history didn't actually happen at all. And that's what the boys were telling me, you know? And the way I see it, there was fucking five of them, you know? And it was only one history teacher. And they all gave me the fucking, the same story, word for word. And he fucking gave me a different story, so I'm going to fucking trust the boys. It's widely accepted that, you know, Vikings, they, they don't come from Switzerland. I mean, 
I, I really don't know where you got this. That they do, right? I have trouble believing it. I don't think that's true at all. I, that's that's what the lads told me anyway. I believe. And and who are these guys? Like who are they to you? They're just fellas that I went to school with. You know, a couple of the lads, a couple of me buddies. Like. No, they, they were clearly in on it together. I mean, they they all seem to be leading you down the garden path. They're all laughing at you behind your back. I nah. Nah, they wouldn't. They want me bugs, like, you know. Well, like, I mean, we, we did our own research, like, we, we researched this, and, you know, you had a, her a horrible time in school, by all accounts. You know. By who was accounts? Well, you know, everyone we asked. You know, we spoke to your, your teachers, we spoke to your your peers. Who the fuck is pals? You were picked on. Nah. Nah. So, uh, there was the odd bit of mess and knowledge, you know. That they used to kind of like some of the boys kind of be stealing me lunch, like and kind of just throwing it on the ground and and jumping at it in front of me, you know. But like, you know, that's that's just what goes on in schools, like, you know. That's, yeah, that, that's what's go that that's what goes on in schools, and it's called bullying. Nah, nah. Do you know, because they were they were laughing when they were doing it, like, you know, so they were just having a laugh. Well, look, I mean, you know, I'm not here to, to argue with your story. I just thought, you know, I thought you'd been bullied. And I just thought we should talk about it. It could be relevant, you know? Well, no, like, fucking, you know, it's not relevant because it's not fucking... Stop the cow. Stop the fucking cow. Stop the cow! <laughs> fucking move! Jesus, man, what's going on? Ooh, you fucking scared. He's fucking... Fucking oh. fuck. Brilliant, Brilliant, right. Right. Well, look at you. Brilliant, Brilliant, right. Right. Don't you ever yeah. fucking try and hit me now with your fucking belly, you fucking weak. They'll hit you with more than me fucking belly. Round the other side of it. They'll hit you with right. a fucking rock. You'll be talking out the back of your head. When you go for a haircut, you'll have to say, watch, watch me lips there. Where are your boys? They're around the fucking corner. Where are the fuck your boys? Oh, ow! Oh, ow! That's my call for them, trying to get them to come out. Oh, ow! Fuck, I'll make it. Fuck, All right, there's one way we can solve this, yeah? Boat rappers, yeah? Yeah, I fucking am fake. Fight with your words. Yeah. You can have it out. Do you want to be in this documentary? He can't be in this fucking documentary. If it's a fucking documentary about him, like, you know? He's not good enough to be in it, right? Fucking He's only a fucking Mickey Mouse fiend, right? And then like fucking Daffy Duck. Fuck him, mate. You can't stand the fucking smell of him. You fucking not staying along with him. I don't want to be in a fucking documentary about this fucking hoopla. It's not just about him. It's about Cork hip hop. Uh, you get a chance to say whatever you like. Anything I want, like. If it's usable, we'll use it. Even cost was no and everything, like. Well, yeah, does that ship a sail? Fuck it, yeah. Yeah, that cunt, I'll fucking, I'll do that all right, yeah. Look, he's agreed to, he's agreed to an interview. If if you're up for that, we can have the two of you talk about one we another. We don't care what he's agreed to. Huh? Well, look, that's, that's what the documentary's about. We can't tell your story without telling his story as well. He doesn't have a story to tell. Well, if he, doesn't have, a, if he doesn't have a story, that's fine then. Let's get him to your place, interview him there and see what he has to say. I think it's a fucking dope idea. I think it's a counter viewpoint, like, it'll, it'll balance things out, it'll look better for you. I think it's a bad idea, but if he wants to do it, that's fucking, that's fine. Right? Yeah, sure. Okay? Ah, uh, Fickenstein says yes. Alright, let's do it, so. Okay guys, okay. Sit down. Cash. Cash, please. Have a seat. Where's he sitting? Fucking don't touch me. Don't come over this line, no. See. This is the new Rochestone Caragaline, right? You're in Rochestone, I'm in Caragaline. We're keeping it like that, right? So we've... Do I have to sit here? We've clearly got a rivalry here. Doctor, can you help me out? What started all this off? It gives you a prescription now for that answer. Uh, a read it out for you there. In a minute, because I can't even doctor. fucking write. I actually you can't. never went to fucking school. I did go to school. Caravan school. That's, there, there's not even such thing as that. So you didn't That's go to school? That's not even a real, a real place. That's the only place you could get in? It's not like, at your, uh, you, like, you, yeah, you couldn't yeah. even walk down the road to school when you were older, because you, like... You can't read. You can't write. You're a retail. 
Anyway, this fucking rivalry, right? About 10 years ago, I went up to, to Rochestone there. I was visiting my auntie. She lives up there. She's good. I don't talk to her anymore now because she lives in Rochestone. So I was playing ball out the front. The front yeah, with the balls. My brother came down, you know? And we had sex. That's what you fucking did. And uh, this thing here kicked the fucking ball in his face. He got in the fucking way. I was going to score a decent goal, like. It's a fucking decent Then I, I said from that day forward, like, no one kicks a ball in my brother's face, you know? I'm not going to let him away with it, so I bit him right there. And you then did, yeah, mate. I did you went away, you fucking cried to your all late, and then I rode up. So have you heard much of Grandmaster Cash's music? I heard a bit of it there, I know, uh, on the old interweb. Uh, uh, to be honest with you, know, it's, uh, it's, it's shit, like. Cause like I come from a big hip hop family, do you know? And Travel off family. I was raised by travel off. Like that one as well. Down the lock. Robots and they're like having sexy with them and what the f what the fuck is all that about, like? At least I'm allowed down the fucking lock. I am allowed down the lock you as well. You're fucking that, you're bad. For what? Fucking stealing eating the swans because you're too poor to buy fucking ham. Like, it's fucking true. I can't That's wait for this to come out. To come out so that people will see. What a fucking How beat there as you are. are. Okay, so you've got this gig coming up. And you booked it the day after Cash's. And Grandmaster Cash is not happy. But basically, like, I don't give a fuck whether people go to your gig or not, like. No one's going to your fucking gig either. Are you selling tickets? No. Yeah. So I give will, a fucking like, hink of that. Use your no, fucking brain box. They'd buy them on the fucking they door. They fucking won't. But like, this idea for this gig, it came to me one night. I was just lying in bed, you know, as I, as I was sleeping. Uh, I got this, I don't know, like, what happened? I just got this brain picture. It just, like, it told me that I should, I should organise a gig there in the crew scheme for that Saturday night, you know? What do you think a brain picture is? A brain picture, like, is when you're fucking lying in bed and your eyes are closed and you're, like, seeing these things in front of your face. But there's not actually thing, any things in front of your face. It's, you know, it's just, like... They are inside your head. Yeah, coming from your mind, yeah. Yeah, like your eyes be closed, but you know the way your eyes see pictures? Instead of your eyes seeing them, kind of your brain sees them, you know? Like you has eyes on yeah, your, inside like you your brain. In the back of your head or something, yeah, do you know? I know us. I know us exactly what you mean. Yeah, I know what you mean as well. Do you know if you eat a bit of like Charleville before you got to bed, a bit of Charleville cheese and all something like that, yeah. you know? Slim you guessed pure weird ones. You guess pure weird ones, like. Yeah, like a and giraffe that's... eating a fucking stealing your ham sandwich or something yeah. like that, you know? Did you ever uh, have that one? No, I never had that one, no. I had a uh, Aladdin riding around on a moped. That was a weird no, one. I didn't know that, that, that one. No. Yeah, that's pure weird, boy. I thought he was the only I one. I always guess fucking brain pictures, boy. Nearly every night of the week. So does I. Fuck. Do you know That's fucking decent. I was shocked. It was hard to believe that something so simple could reunite these estranged childhood friends. I'll fucking see you. But an even bigger shock was yet to come. These shoes. I love these shoes. <laughs> That's a fucking good impression, actually, Robert De Niro laughing. We did a good impression of him. See that? You're getting that on film. These shoes. Boy, he's some uh, fucking mad after, but he's got boy. the skills, you know. Speaking of acting, actually, do you know that pure that you has in your video? Yeah, yeah. Fucking, uh, do you know what's on it? covering my wet, though. Yeah, the one you were fucking spraying. It was pure, uh, kind of suggestible as well, like, do you know the way? Because it was a hose and it was fucking spraying liquid all over, yeah, like a big fucking langer. Yeah, but, uh, I'll uh, get into her and ask her there, do you know? I said yeah, she'd be mad up for it, like, she's mad for the cock, like, that one. It was good, I suppose, yeah. Out. Clearing the air and shit, you know. Cheers for that, lads. Uh, Thanks for coming out. Talk to you later. Nice one, mate. Good luck. Fuck it. Do you want the two of us just to do that gig, like, together? Because, you know, we're making no fucking sales anyway. We might as well just put both of them on the same night, you know? What's uh, you think? Any chance? Eh. Uh, eh. Uh, I'll get on to you about it, bye. Eh. Uh, I, I don't know yet, you know, my agent, yeah. He Aye. fucking, do you know, I have to talk to him. But, you know. Um, but, you know, I'm not trying to be a fucking, fucking cunt rag. Right, 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 no, 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 that's fucking right, but yeah. Um, no. Let you know if you fucking change your mind, right? Just I'll give, give you a buzz. Give me a buzz off the right? Yeah, yeah, nice one for that, lads, right? Talk to that, though. Take it easy. Jesus, man, are you, are you really not going to do this gig? Like, that was perfect, like, I mean, you wouldn't have to hold the whole thing on your own. 
And uh, what if he's taking the piss, like, do you know? Like, do you know, it kind of seems that we saw that old my stuff, like, but, you know, I still don't trust him, like, do you know? You're, you're not selling tickets, like, you stand a chance of both doing a good gig now. That gig is supposed to be my gig on, on my own, like, do you know? It's my fucking EP launch. It's something I got to, to do on my own, like. Like, ten years ago, there, there was no fucking Irish comedians or nothing, do you know? And fucking Tommy Dernan came out of the blue and he fucking, he did it on his own, like. And I needs to do the same thing if I wants to be the fucking first proper fucking Irish rapper. You don't have to do it by yourself. I do have to do it by myself. And fucking, what's more as well, is fucking the first, first day you fucking got onto me, you said you wanted to do a fucking, a documentary about me. And that's all you have, like. That's not what you have. It was until fucking you asked him to fucking come into my house. My fucking house. We're only trying to show a balanced viewpoint. I showed you a balanced viewpoint. And fucking, do you know, if that's not good enough for you, fuck you. And fuck your fucking movie. That's fucking, that's it, like. What what do we do? Are you serious? Should we go after him, like, or? Wait, I think you should just go and apologize to him. This whole thing was your idea. Do it on one person, Luke. And now the one person is gone. Our subject was gone, and all attempts to contact him were in vain. With deadlines looming and an incomplete documentary, we searched for some way to salvage our work and maybe win back Cash's trust. Story fiends of yours is Grandmaster Cash. You can't fucking reach me because I'm out the gap. Probably writing some tabs so I'm aware from my phone. So leave a fucking message straight after all the torn. Hi Cash, um, it's it's Shames here. Um, like, you're, you're not answering my calls so it forces me to leave a message. Um, look, if you give me a call back, we'll, we'll talk more about it. Um, I'll, I'll see you whenever. Nice one. Desperately, I scoured the existing footage for anything that could get us back on track. It was Cash's throwaway comment about Tommy Tiernan that got me thinking. Could we approach this ambassador for Irish entertainment for his insight into Cork hip-hop? I took a chance and sent an email to Tiernan's representatives explaining our situation. Two days later, I got a reply. And incredibly, Tommy had agreed to meet with us. We're making a documentary on a a Cork-based hip-hop artist named Grandmaster Cash. Firstly, have you ever heard of him? Never heard of Grandmaster Cash, no. Is he is he black? Motherfucking 29. Shout out to the Roco crew, the Carriga Massive, and all the cock rappers. Grandmaster Cash in the place. Dopey fucking bitch, be your steam in my Unreal. It's an old Red Hurley song, is it? <laughs> Hip hop and rap are usually seen as being part of American culture, certainly more so than, than Irish culture. Can you see any reason why young Irish people would forsake their own culture in favour of an American one? Yeah, that's a bit daft. That kind of stuff, like American lingo, and that's daft. It's when you, you there's someone like Jinx Lennon, uh, who, or Grandmaster Cash, who, if you use Irish phrases, and uh, I think that that's what nationalises it. And you're not, when you're doing that then, you're not aping anything else. You know, it's when, if you're an Irish fella and you're using, you know, I be in the bloods and he be in the crips, you know, that, that, that you know, you're, you're better off saying about the reality of, you know, I was driving around town to me mother's Ford Focus, <laughs> you know. We've seen, we've seen bands such as Keela uh, merge hip hop with Irish traditional music. Do you think serious fans of either genre would be open to the other? If you take stuff like some early Bob Dylan stuff, Subterranean Homesick Blues or It's All Right Ma, it's the same type of wordplay that goes on in hip hop. The own the the thing they have in common is the words and the playing with words and the, the, the things that sets them apart are the beats behind it. Many people have been seriously offended by some of the content of Grandmaster Cash's songs. Do you believe that it is genuinely offensive or is it too ridiculous to be offensive? I mean what's offensive? <clears throat> When Brian Callan made his speech at the Ardesh and he said that he defined Ireland as a brand, that's offensive, you know? 
that uh, we are defined only in terms of our ability to market ourselves and to make money, that's more offensive than anything Grandmaster Cash could ever say. And Brian Cowan is the Taoiseach. Do you know? So if he's capable of getting Ireland so wrong... Uh, now, mind you, you know, Brian Cowan is somebody <coughs> born and reared in Offaly, so he's never seen the ocean. To me, the ocean represents infinity. And if you've never seen infinity, if all you've seen is Clara and Tullamore, Banagher, you know, I think we're, we're doomed. You know, because if you... Cork has mountains and hills and infinity. You know, no, he's not offensive at all. And I can see, I can see, black people, not only black people in Africa, uh, but black people all over the world getting into that big style. The bitch be pure steaming. That's a, that's a, that's a track for the masses. It, uh, the lyrics are obviously fantastic. And he's obviously a um, poet of the streets, urban Shakespeare. Uh, Heaney, Heaney of the housing estate, you know. Uh, Is that real? Like I said, I think it's... Absolutely. Like, did he actually say those things? Like, yeah, and you didn't kind of photoshop the walls? You know, I think it is a phenomenal opportunity for... Cork hip hop to become as well known as Detroit, you know. Um, you could have a biog of Grandmaster Cash. You know, Eminem's one was called Eight Mile. You could have like the Panna. You know that would be, or it would be phenomenal. I think you need to make a movie about him. You know, showing his tough urban upbringing. You know, no, I think he's a phenomenon. I think he's. Um, I think his music is as important as the constitution. You know, it needs to be divilment in it, and and hope that your divilment is uh, fused with soul, and then then you'll be grand. And uh, the bitch be pure steam, and <laughs> great. It's important. Thanks, man. Oh, thank you. Story, uh, Fekenstein. Let's do it. Let, yeah. No other gig. Who are you here for? Fucking Grandmaster Cash. Why the fuck oh, is he doing something with Fekenstein? There's a fucking gong. Fekenstein. Carrick Line. Carrick Line. Grandmaster Cash. Fekenstein. 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 F
Good run, mate. Throw back at me in the fucking arm with no leg. Like. Nah, you'll be correct. No fucking, it's not pure fucking consummation profession. Lucky we had a doctor instead, wasn't it? Fucking hell. That thing gawked his fucking ring up, like, you know? I, I, I don't want to add to your nerves, you're, you know, you're obviously getting in the zone here, like, but have you played a gig this size before? Uh, no, I've never played a gig before. Never, ever before? Nah. I'm fucking shitting myself, like. Alright guys, we want you all to have a great time here tonight. Thanks for coming, we've got Dr. Fiekenstein, Grandmaster Cash, Fiekin Cash, Roku Crew and Carrick and Massive. Give it up for Dr. Fiekenstein. Fiek! Chelsea Saints. Watching this newly rekindled friendship, I felt a true sense of satisfaction. Here were two former rivals, united now by a shared passion, expressing their talent and creativity to people who really appreciated it. Even the most fervent critic of hip-hop simply had to look at this audience's reaction. It was definitive proof of the positive and uplifting effect of the music. Give that a chance, give that a chance. And I felt that I had learned a lot. Initially, I approached the subject from an academic point of view, trying to understand why profanity and antipathy seemed so prevalent in the genre. 
But as I got to know Cash as a musician and a friend, I realized that there is a person and a reason behind even the most callous of words. And I began to understand why this type of expression is so important to so many young people. Stop writing kids! Stop spreading disease! Stop telling drugs! And send the Africans some me! Stop telling lies! It's time to tell the truth! It's got something to do with where the fuck you at you! Yes, Cash regularly caused offence. No, he wasn't always the most tactful person. And maybe he did go out of his way to shock people. But I think Cash would agree that true creativity is nothing if not provocative. Because there needs to be divilment in it. And the hope that your divilment is fused with soul. Let's give the back to chance, give the fucking back to chance. Where's my beat, guy? I'm like a fucking mellow factory owner. Do you know what I mean? He, uh, his only function is to be an agent and to get me gigs. After the gig is booked, what I do is I fold them up and I stick them in me. <laughs> pictures uh, when you're lying in bed or on a couch or on a pull out bed or on a bean bag <laughs> <laughs> hip hop culture is often the subject of criticism well uh, hip hop culture has often been the blah, 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 blah. Mm, uh, mm. while the self aggrandizing nature of the lyrics But it walks that way too. It was probably just a, a kind of big car park for boats. <laughs> <laughs> Could go and get a mangle if they wanted to. <laughs> With global warming, what happens is that the uh, polar ice cats are melting. <laughs> <laughs> They see me doing rap shows, they like what I do And then when I go into town to buy shoes They say <laughs> I come from a big hip hop family, you know but, uh, <laughs> I come from a, uh, a big hip hop uh, family, <laughs> and just I was raised. By travelers. <laughs> the last movie we're going to be reviewing tonight is Three Hundred. I think it's a great movie. So much so that I've done a little reenactment of it. Oh, I have chosen my words carefully, Pajin. Perhaps you should have done the same. This is blasphemy. This is madness. Madness! This is Sparta, you dope! Oh, f no! I hope you enjoy that. I'm shitting myself. Absolutely shit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking <laughs> shitting myself. Stop laughing. What the fuck? <laughs> Sean, you're breaking my fucking heart. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.
it's amazing that something like that would happen in a hotel and like we all presume that the child you know it might be some 14 year old after getting a serious pummeling in a hotel room and, now I have to say that it could also be a massive cat because <laughs> <laughs> cats you know when cats are riding they make that kind of noise as well so Let's do it. Let, yeah. No other gig. And I walked out and on top of the telepole there was this dog strung up, you know, cut in half like and uh, basically a note written in the dog's blood kind of sellotaped onto the dog saying stop folding me <laughs> 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 this is so ridiculous <laughs> <laughs>